Okay, get ready to dive in, everyone, because today we're tackling a film that's basically a shot of adrenaline straight to the heart. Run, Lola, run. Huh? I mean, we're not just talking about a movie here. We're talking about a full-on sensory experience. It really is in a category of its own, a yeah. wild ride that manages to be this heart-pounding thriller, but then it also throws these huge philosophical questions at you, and it all goes down about, what, 20 minutes of the character's life? 20 minutes that feel like a lifetime, and that's the hook, right? This woman, Lola, racing against time to save her boyfriend. Our sources really dig into how Run, Lola, Run plays with time, fate, and the choices we make. And don't forget the visuals. This film is a visual feast. Absolutely, it's like a comic book exploded onto the screen. But before we get lost in the colors and the chaos, let's set the stage. We're dealing with not one, not two, but three alternate realities, each one kicked off by the same desperate phone call. Three chances, three different paths, and the really mind-bending part is how those tiny little choices Nola makes they ripple outwards. They have these huge e consequences. It's like that butterfly effect thing they talk about, right? <laughs> Except instead of a butterfly flapping its wings, it's Lola bumping into someone on the street mm -hmm. or deciding to answer the phone a few seconds later. Suddenly, everything changes. And that's where the run part comes in. Yeah. Literally. Imagine sprinting through the streets of Berlin, every second ticking away, knowing that one wrong turn could mean disaster. Our sources made this really interesting comparison to video games. Okay, I see it. It's like Lola's caught in some crazy high-stakes game trying to find the right path, the winning strategy, before time runs out. Exactly. And just like in a video game, she gets multiple tries. But here's the thing. Those game over screens, they represent real life or death stakes, not just hitting the reset button. So let's break down these runs, shall we? Because each one takes us on such a wild ride. From what I gathered from our sources, it all starts with this frantic phone call from Manny. Lola's boyfriend. He's in some deep trouble, and he needs a lot of cash. Fast. 100,000 Deutschmarks, to be exact. Right. And he's got, like, 20 minutes to come up with it. Right. So the clock is ticking. Run one, if I'm remembering correctly, ends in, well, tragedy. Yeah, things spiral pretty quickly. Even something as simple as being held up for a few seconds can send Lola down a completely different path, and not in a good way. Right. And it makes you wonder, if we could rewind our own lives, even just by a minute or two, knowing what we know now, how many of those bad endings could we avoid? That's the question that haunts you, isn't it? But then again, who's to say those bad choices don't lead to something unexpected down the line? It's all connected, right? But let's get back to the film. Run two, things get even more intense. Lola's not just reacting anymore. She's taking charge, and she's willing to take some big risks. Stealing a gun, robbing a bank. But this Lola means business. But does it pay off? Well, that's the thing about Run, Lola, Run. It constantly subverts your expectations. Just when you think you know where the story's going, bam, it throws you a curveball. Speaking of curveballs, can we talk about the look of this film for a minute? I mean, it's like a punch of color right to the eyeballs. Yeah. You watch this thing, and you're not just watching a story unfold. You're living it. Every frame is electric. It's that visual energy, that urgency that just sucks you in, doesn't let go. And a lot of that comes down to the way Tykwer uses color, especially red. Oh, the red. Lola's hair. It's like this beacon, this force of nature blazing through Berlin. I read in one of our sources that they actually use special filters, even digitally enhance the red in post-production to make it pop like that. It's not just her hair, though. Look at how red is woven through the whole film. The phone booth, certain buildings, even just these flashes of red in the background. It's subtle, but it's always there, like a heartbeat. It's interesting because red, I mean, that's such a loaded color, right? Passion, danger, urgency. Mm. All those things we're talking about with Lola and her mission. What do you think, is Tykwer using red symbolically here, or is it just a stylistic choice? It's hard to imagine it's not intentional, given how carefully every other element of the film is crafted. And this is where it gets really fascinating. Some of our sources see the color red as a representation of Lola's energy, her life force even. It's like this visual manifestation of her determination to bend fate to her will. And it's not just the color that keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's the way the film moves. It's like watching a highlight reel of someone's most intense moments all spliced together. Those quick cuts, the jump cuts, those moments where suddenly, bam, we're in animation. It's almost overwhelming. In a good way, I mean. It's meant to be. Tykwer wanted to capture that feeling of Berlin at that specific moment in time. This city in flux, a place where the old and the new were colliding, and the future felt like a wide-open possibility. So the style, the visuals. Yeah. 
it's not just about being cool or experimental. It's about reflecting a specific time and place. Exactly. Run, Lola, Run is as much a love letter to Berlin as it is a story about these characters. It's about that post-wall energy, the sense of everything moving a million miles an hour, and those fast cuts, the way Tykwer uses split screens to show us multiple perspectives at once, even the animation. It's all part of capturing that feeling of chaos and possibility. Okay, so the animation, though, I have to admit, that went through me for a loop at first. Why animation? Why not just stick with live action? That's the question, right. And different sources had different takes on it. Some argue that it's Tykwer's way of visually representing those moments where Lola seems to be transcending reality, like she's tapping into some otherworldly power. Like in a video game, when your character levels up, yeah. where you unlock a new ability. Exactly. It's like in those animated sequences, Lola's not just running, she's defying the rules of the game, rewriting the code of her own destiny. Other sources see the animation as a way to emphasize the cyclical nature of the story, the idea that time isn't linear, that we're all trapped in these loops of choice and consequence. So we've got the red, the fast-paced editing, the animation. It's like Tykwer threw everything at the wall to see what would stick. And you know what? It all works. It creates this totally immersive experience. Mm -hmm. But at its heart, Run Lola Run is still a love story, right? On the surface, yes. You've got Lola risking everything to save Manny. But even that relationship is more complex than it seems. Is it really love that's driving her, or is it something else? Guilt? A need to prove something to herself? The film doesn't give us easy answers. It's like, yeah, she loves Man and Annie, but is it purely about saving him? Or is there this element of Lola needing to prove she's not powerless? That she can take control, rewrite the script, even if it means bending the rules of reality. And that's where the whole fate versus free will thing comes into play, right? Mm. Our sources were all over this, debating whether Lola's in the driver's seat or if she's just along for the ride. It's kind of like, even if there's some grand plan, some predetermined path, Lola's saying, nope, not having it. She's fighting for every inch, every second. And that's what makes her such a compelling character. She's not some damsel in distress waiting to be rescued. She's the one kicking down doors, literally in some scenes, to change her fate. It makes you think how much of our lives is already written and how much can we actually control? Do we make choices or do choices make us? It's enough to give you an existential crisis. Maybe that's why, all these years later, Run Lola Run still feels so fresh, so relevant. It's not just about a girl and a ticking clock. It's about something deeper, something we all grapple with. But hey, enough about the heavy stuff for a sec. Can we just appreciate how this film, with its crazy style, basically blew the doors open for filmmakers? I mean, our sources were packed with examples of how Run Lola Run influenced everything, from music videos to big-budget action flicks. Yeah, it's like Tykor ripped up the rulebook on visual storytelling. Suddenly everyone's using jump cuts, split screens, time lapses, all these techniques that Run Lola Run made mainstream. I read somewhere that the Wachowskis, you know, the ones who made The Matrix, they showed Run Lola Run to their crew as inspiration. That whole bullet time thing definitely got some Lola vibes going on. And it's not just the big budget stuff. Think about how many indie films, even music videos, started using those fast-paced montages, those hyperkinetic sequences, after Run Lola Run hit the scene. It's like Tykwer gave filmmakers permission to get bold, to break free from those traditional ways of telling a story. And it worked. The film was a hit, and it's still inspiring people today. I'm curious, what do you think it is about Run Lola Run that resonates with people, even those who aren't film buffs? Why has this film stood the test of time? Well, it's that perfect storm of style and substance, you know? On the surface, you've got this visually stunning, adrenaline-fueled ride. But beneath that, there are these layers of meaning, these questions about fate, free will, the choices we make that really get under your skin. It's a film you can enjoy on multiple levels. Plus, it's just plain fun to watch. Yeah. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time, wondering if Lola's going to pull it off. It's like a 20-minute roller coaster ride that leaves you wanting more. And isn't that the mark of a great film? It stays with you long after the credits roll. It makes you think, it makes you feel, and it might even make you want to watch it again and again just to catch all those little details you missed the first time. I know I'm adding it to my rewatch list. And for anyone listening who hasn't experienced Run Lola Run yet, well, what are you waiting for? Go check it out and then come find us online. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Because let's be real, this film sparks so many conversations, so many what-if scenarios. If you could have those 20 minutes back, Knowing what you know now, would you change anything? Or would you just hold on tight and enjoy the ride? 
that's the question Run Lola Run leaves us with, isn't it? And I think that's why, after all these years, it still has the power to move us, to challenge us, and to remind us that sometimes life is all about how we choose to run our own race. Beautifully said. A huge thanks to everyone for joining us on this deep dive into Run Lola Run. Until next time, remember, every choice, every second, has the potential to change everything.